गुड मॉर्निंग टूडे क्लास इज अबउट ग्लॉकोमा so coming to primary open angle glaucoma so what is primary we don't have any specific um, causes okay so there is no obvious uh, systemic or ocular cause of rise in the intraocular pressure that is why we call it as uh, primary and there is a uh, open angle of the anterior chamber it is also known as uh, chronic uh, simple glaucoma of adult onset uh, and is uh, typically characterized by uh, slowly progressive raised intraocular pressure of more than 21 mm of mercury optic disc cupping and um, specific visual field defects okay coming to the etiological factors uh, in hereditary it can be hereditary in age the risk increases with increasing age uh, fifth particularly in the fifth and seventh decades and uh, race it develops earlier and is more severe in black myopes are more predisposed than the normals and diabetics and uh, cigarette smoking also increases the risk factor of open angle glaucoma followed by high blood pressure and uh, thyroid problems like thyrotoxicosis pathogenesis of rise in intraocular pressure it occurs due to decrease in the aqueous outflow facility due to increased resistance to aqueous outflow caused by one can be age related thickening and the other is uh, sclerosis of the trabeculae and absence of giant vacuoles in the cells lining the canal of schlem coming to the clinical features uh, symptoms the disease is usually insidious and usually uh, asymptomatic uh, it can have mild headache and eye ache but rarely the patient may notice a defect in the visual field reading and close work often present increasing difficulties owing to accommodative failure due to constant pressure on the ciliary muscle and its nerve supply therefore the patient usually complains of frequent change in presbyopic glasses and uh, the patients also develop delay delayed dark adaptation so most frequently one of the main reason for uh, frequent changes in presbyopic glasses is glaucoma and uh, only uh, angle closure causes uh, severe pain so primary open angle usually causes mild headache and eye ache uh, these are the tonometers uh, Uh, the picture shows goldman applanation tonometer which is the gold standard uh, it is usually slit lamp mounted and uh, it touches the cornea and uh, gives a uh, two semicircular lines the reading is taken when the two inner aspects of the uh, two semicircular lines when the uh, meet together okay so usually it is the gold standard but the disadvantage is it touches the cornea uh, next is shiot's tonometer in shiot's tonometer is the old tonometer so uh, shiot's tonometer also is a type of uh, contact tonometer so it uh, here the shiot's tonometer is kept on the cornea and uh, the reading is taken from the scale in the shiot's tonometer and corresponding uh, readings are taken from the table which is given along with the shiot's tonometer um, instrument the other tonometers are perkins and hill tonometer uh, and tono pen these are the recent things perkins is usually used for uh, children uh, while measuring the pressures in congenital glaucoma also in the Uh, examination under anesthesia in the operation operating theater 
so as i told all these were contact methods so we are in the covid era and usually we go for non contact tonometer which will not touch the patient's cornea here uh, a puff of air is given and uh, the uh, pressure is recorded from the puff of air which intends the cornea and thereby it gives the pressure reading it is used for mainly for screening however the gold standard is goldman applanation tonometer coming to the signs usually three i say one is intraocular pressure and the second is optic disc changes and the third is visual field changes so iop normal intraocular pressure is 10 to 21 mm of mercury and uh, whenever there is a diurnal variation that is morning and evening reading uh, there is a diurnal variation of over 5 mm of mercury then it is suspicious and over 8 mm is mercury difference it then it is diagnostic of glaucoma whereas in the later stages iop is permanently raised above 21 mm of mercury and uh, ranges between 30 to 45 mm of mercury then uh, coming to the next thing is uh, uh, optic disc changes so usually the retina optic disc is a uh, um retina optic disc we see with the help of direct ophthalmoscope and the second is indirect ophthalmoscope direct ophthalmoscope gives a magnified images whereas uh, indirect ophthalmoscope gives wide field of view so usually it is used for peripheral retinal changes also this is the normal retina which shows the normal optic disc and the normal optic cup and the retinal vessels are arising from the center of the optic disc and uh, going superiorly inferiorly nasally and temporally coming to the optic disc changes uh, we see the optic disc changes with the help of ophthalmoscope which i already told so usually the vertical cup actually the normal cup optic disc and cup ratio is 0.3 is to 1 so in um, glaucoma what is happening is vertically oval cup due to selective loss of neural rim tissue in the inferior and superior poles and sometimes there is asymmetry of the cups so a difference of more than 0.2 between the two eyes is significant and a large cup that is 0.6 or more so that may also occur due to concentric expansion okay so more than 0.6 is also due to concentric expansion is also suggestive of glaucoma and then we have splinter hemorrhages which are present on or near the optic disc margin and there are paler areas on the disc so all these are the optic disc changes associated with glaucoma main is vertically oval cup asymmetry of the cups large cup more than 0.6 again splinter hemorrhages and paler areas coming to advanced so what we saw was earlier defects so coming to the advanced optic disc changes we have marked cupping with a cup size of 0.7 to 0.9 and uh, so when the cup size is increasing you have thinning of the neuroretinal rim so there is also thinning of the neuroretinal rim and nasal shifting of the retinal vessels which have the appearance of being broken off at the margin which is called as uh, bayoneting sign so this is one of the most important sign and uh, lamina dot sign this is another most important sign so what is lamina dot sign Uh, the pores in the lamina cribrosa are slit shaped and are visible up to the margin of the disc so when it is slit shaped and it is visible we call it as dot so lamina dot sign okay and finally when every uh, all the nerves are damaged and it becomes thin and atrophied it leads to glaucomatous optic atrophy which is called as cavernous optic atrophy so this is called as cavernous optic atrophy specifically the term is cavernous optic atrophy which is mainly caused by glaucoma 
so these are the optic disc changes advanced optic disc changes and these are the pictures are showing lamina dot sign which are the pores in the um, lamina cribrosa which are seen clearly and uh, you also have thinning of the neuroretinal rim so neuroretinal rim is thinned out coming to the arrangement of nerve fibers so the nerve fibers are arranged in superior and inferior bundles and according to the quadrant we call it as superior arcuate fibers and inferior arcuate fibers and uh, superior nasal and inferior retinal fibers okay pmb means papillomacular bundle that is from the especially from the mac, uh, macular area to the disc that we call it as papillomacular bundle and uh, it is the least uh, it is highly resistant okay it is highly resistant to the pressure changes so this is called uh, papillomacular bundle okay so these are the arrangement of the nerve fibers so why this arrangement is important because uh, according to this arrangement only we have the visual field defects so visual field defects uh, we usually mark it with the help of a tangent screen or gerem screen uh, this is a black screen with a white circles and uh, it and uh, the visual field of the patient is plotted over the tangent screen or gerem screen nowadays we use uh, automated machines uh, which are called humphrey field analyzer or octopus uh, field analyzer this is the older technique so before that we should know what is visual field defects so it is called scotoma so scotoma is an area of reduced uh, relative or total absolute loss of vision surrounded by a seeing area so this is called as scotoma and uh, what they in the exam they last germs area what is germs area uh, it is 10 to 25 degrees from the fixation is called as germs area on the germ screen and we should also know the uh, definition of scotoma so here it is given so it is an area of reduced uh, relative or total absolute loss of vision surrounded by a seeing area so these are the visual field defects usually it occurs in only one particular uh, uh, order first comes is isopter contraction followed by bearing of the blind spot and then comes your paracentral scotoma and then sedal scotoma and then arcuate scotoma and then biarcuate or ring scotoma followed by roney's nasal step tunnel vision and temporal island of vision so isopter contraction is generalized contraction more all the whole it is contraction then barring of the blind spot is near the blind spot so near the blind spot and from there uh, we have sedal scotoma so sedal means a sickle like so it is the sickle like scotoma and uh, coming to arcuate scotoma arcuate means it is arc like so it is uh, from the blind spot you develop an arcuate like scotoma so it is superior we call it as superior arcuate scotoma and when it is inferior we call it as inferior arcuate scotoma so when both are present you call it as biarcuate scotoma or ring scotoma so it forms a ring like thing so we call it as a ring scotoma and when the superior scotoma meets the inferior scotoma we have a gap in between which is called as roney's nasal step okay and then comes your tunnel vision tunnel vision is only the center vision is uh, tunnel like okay so that is why it is called tunnel vision and finally you have a temporal island of vision 
so this visual field effects happens only in this particular order as i told earlier so jerem screen is an older method nowadays we use uh, uh, this uh, screen uh, this uh, uh, charting is done with the help of a computers so we call it as humphrey field analyzer or we have one more uh, thing which is called octopus uh, analyzer so whichever we want we can use it either humphrey or octopus and it gives the field uh, defects like this okay all the black areas are the field defects coming to provocative test so what are provocative test provocative test or those test which uh, so suppose we have a dilemma whether the pressure is increased or not then uh, we give the provocative test uh, where Uh, the pressure will which is on the border line will raise after some particular test so first is water drinking test uh, it is based on the theory that glaucomatous eyes have a greater response to water drinking so in it after an 8 hours of fasting baseline iop is noted and the patient is asked to drink 1 liter of water following which iop is noted every 15 minutes for 1 hour the maximum rise in iop occurs in 15 to 30 minutes and returns to the baseline level after 60 minutes in both normal and glaucomatous eyes a rise of 8 mm or more is said to be diagnostic of open angle glaucoma so the basic is nothing but um, you have um, increased iop after drinking water coming to investigations first is tonometry as i showed the pictures you have aplanation tonometry giotts tonometry second is diurnal variation test and the third is gonioscopy so it reveals a wide angle open angle of anterior chamber and uh, optic disc changes we have seen um, which is shown by ophthalmoscopy slit lamp examination of the anterior segment then perimetry as i told with uh, humphrey's field analyzer to detect the visual field defects and nerve fiber analyzer hfa and oct so the recent nerve fiber analyzers coming to the treatment we have medical therapy argon or diode laser trabeculoplasty and filtration surgery which is mainly trabeculectomy in medical management we have a wide range of drugs uh, which can be given one is topical beta blockers which is 0.5 percentage timolol it is contraindicated in bronchial asthma and heart blocks and beta select beta cardio selective is betoxolol uh, we have also adrenergic drugs alpha 2 agonist or 0.2 percent brimonidin and uh, we also have carbonic anhydrase inhibitors example is 2% dorsolamide and prostaglandin analogs example is 0.005 percentage latanoprost coming to argon or uh, diode laser trabeculoplasty uh, its hypotensive effect is caused by increasing the outflow facility by producing collagen shrinkage on the inner aspect of the trabecular meshwork and opening the intra trabecular spaces so 50 spots on the anterior half of the trabecular meshwork spread over 180 degrees is given uh, which will produce um, opening of the intra trabecular spaces by producing collagen shrinkage Uh, surgical treatment is mainly trabeculectomy and the indication so we go for the surgical treatment only when indicated initially we try the um, medical management that what are all the drugs we have told we try all the medical management and only when it is not controlled we go for surgical trabeculectomy uh, so the indications are one is uncontrolled glaucoma then non compliance the patient is not taking the medical therapy properly and failure with the medical therapy 
and uh, they are also not uh, proper for organ laser trabeculoplasty and the final is eyes with advanced diseases so with that we finish primary open angle glaucoma now we go into primary angle closure glaucoma so this is a type of primary glaucoma again it is a primary which means there is no obvious systemic or ocular cause in which rise in intraocular pressure occurs due to blockage of the aqueous humor outflow by closure uh, of a narrower angle of the anterior chamber coming to the etiology anatomical factors so hypermetropic eyes with a shallow anterior chamber eyes with narrow angle of the anterior chamber which may be due to small eyeball or nanophthalmus uh, plateau iris configuration and age is more more common in the fifth decade of life and females are more prone coming to precipitating so not every time the pressure increases there are some precipitating factors when the pressure increases so in an eye that is predisposed to develop angle closure glaucoma any of the following factors may precipitate an attack it can be dim illumination or it can be emotional stress or it can be use of midriatic drugs like atropine cyclopentalate tropicamide and phenylephrine so most of the midriatic drugs can also precipitate the uh, angle closure and uh, that is why it is essential to assess the anterior chamber uh, depth before dilating the patient this is uh, one of the picture showing mechanism of angle closure glaucoma where you have relative pupillary block so once it is attached to the lens and it is stuck on to the lens it causes iris bombay formation which leads to appositional angle closure or synechial angle closure so with this iris bombay leads to rise in pressure thereby the angle closes and um, all kinds of increased pressure iopa pressure changes happens leading to symptoms coming to stages uh, we have latent primary angle closure glaucoma a primary angle closure glaucoma suspect and uh, followed by subacute or intermittent uh, primary angle closure glaucoma acute primary angle closure glaucoma chronic primary angle closure glaucoma and absolute glaucoma in clinical features we have eclipse sign so eclipse sign indicates decreased anterior chamber depth and it can be elicited by shining a pen light across the anterior chamber from the temporal side and uh, noting a shadow on the nasal side so slit lamp biomicroscopic signs we have decreased axial anterior chamber depth convex shaped iris lens diaphragm and close proximity of the iris to the cornea in the periphery and gonioscopic examination shows a very narrow angle and van herrick slit lamp grading of the angle again we have provocative test for uh, angle closure glaucoma also so you have prone dark room test which is the most popular and uh, best physiological provocative test in this test the baseline iop is recorded and the patient is made to lie prone in a dark room for 1 hour so he must remain awake so that the pupils remain dilated after 1 hour the iop is again measured so an increase in iop of more than 8 mm mercury is considered diagnostic of primary angle closure glaucoma and the other test is uh, midriatic provocative test uh, in this either a weak midriatic like 0.5% tropicamide or used to produce a mid dilated pupil uh, a pressure rise of more than 8 mm is considered positive coming to the treatment in both eyes uh, we do prophylactic laser iridotomy in all the patients diagnosed as latent or uh, angle closure glaucoma suspect we call it a suspect uh, pacs primary angle closure glaucoma suspect so we do prophylactic laser peripheral iridotomy 
so this is the picture showing peripheral iridotomy uh, so they make a hole in the peripheral iris and thereby create a way for the aqueous to come out so that uh, the iris bombay formation does not happen and uh, patient will be having a uh, free flow of aqueous uh, from the posterior chamber to anterior chamber uh, and then um, angle closure glaucoma will not precipitate coming to colored halos so whenever uh, colored halos are seen the first uh, main differential diagnosis is uh, glaucoma so what is meant by colored halos it is seeing colors distributed in the spectrum of rainbow red being outermost and violet innermost while watching on a lighted bulb so this is the same as a uh, uh, rainbow of colors but around a lighted bulb so a differential diagnosis of colored halos are also important first main thing is glaucoma uh, colored halos in pacg occur due to accumulation of fluid in the corneal epithelium and alteration in the refractive condition of the corneal lamella the other causes are uh, acute purulent conjunctivitis and early cataract changes but the diagnosis first differential diagnosis is glaucoma Uh, Fincham's stenopic slit test. It is a stenopic slit which is passed across the pupil. Uh, during this test, glaucomatous hollows remains intact, while a halo due to cataract is broken up into segments. So, which is called as stenopic slit. This is called stenopic slit. Keep it in front of the eye and rotate. So, whether the uh, colored halos are broken or not. according to that we differentiate whether it is due to glaucoma or cataract coming to acute primary angle closure glaucoma the symptoms include pain which is sudden onset and very severe pain in the eye which radiates along the branches of the fifth nerve and nausea vomiting and uh, prostrations and uh, we have due to corneal edema rapid impairment of vision redness photophobia and lacrimation coming to the signs the lids are edematous conjunctiva is chemosed and congested cornea becomes edematous insensitive anterior chamber is very shallow angle of the anterior chamber is completely closed on gonioscopy and uh, iris may be discolored pupil is semi dilated vertically oval and fixed iop is markedly elevated usually between 40 and 70 mm of mercury and the optic disc is also edematous and hyperemic and the fellow eye also shows uh, shallow anterior chamber coming to the causes of red eye we have a uh, first thing is conjunctivitis and the next to most common is acute congestive glaucoma followed by iridocyclitis coming to medical management usually we give systemic hyperosmotic agents iv mannitol 1 g per kg body weight followed by acetazolamide uh, either iv injection or 250 mg tablet 3 times a day along with that we give analgesics antiemetics and uh, pilocarpin eye drops initially 2% pilocarpin should be administered every 30 minutes for 1 to 2 hours and then 6 hourly and any other beta blocker drops like uh, 0.5% timolol or anything can also be applied coming to surgical treatment uh, the same thing we do peripheral iridotomy with a ndr laser Uh, but we also do in the fellow eye which also has a uh, shallow anterior chamber and uh, the other thing is uh, trabeculectomy coming to wax triad it may be seen in patients with uh, post congestive glaucoma and in treated cases of acute congestive glaucoma it is characterized by glaucoma flecken 
which is anterior subcapsular lenticular opacity and patches of iris atrophy and slightly dilated non reacting pupil due to sphincter atrophy uh, so all these three things uh, forms the vox triad okay but usually it is associated after acute congestive attack of glaucoma so finally we reach uh, absolute primary angle closure we finish primary open angle angle closure uh, then the end stage whenever the glaucoma is not treated and it is left as such it reaches uh, primary angle closure glaucoma absolute stage okay so what it is is actually it is painful blind eye the eye is painful irritable and completely blind uh, there is no light perception um and uh, that is no light perception means the vision is absolutely not present it is also painful and uh, irritable and uh, it is a perilimbal reddish bluish zone is present uh, which is due to ciliary flush around the cornea and the cornea becomes hazy and develops epithelial bullae which is called as bullous keratopathy or uh, filaments which is called as filamentary keratitis and the anterior chamber is also very shallow and uh, coming to the iris it becomes uh, atrophic uh, and the what is happening to the pupil pupil becomes uh, fixed uh, it fixed means it does not uh, react to the light or a light reaction is absent optic disc uh, will also show glaucomatous optic atrophy because it is the end stage uh, so almost all the nerves have died so you have the cup size cup size optic cup size of more than 0.9 and uh, totally it becomes optic atrophy and uh, when iop is measured with uh, tonometer the iop is usually high and the eyeball becomes uh, stony hard okay coming to treatment of um, absolute glaucoma so first as we told it is a painful blind eye so retrobulba uh, our aim is to prevent the pain for the patient uh, so whenever vision is vision could not be restored at least the pain has to be relieved for the patient so we go for retrobulba alcohol injection it may be given to relieve the pain Uh, so what it is actually doing is it uh, it destroys the ciliary ganglion so from the ciliary ganglion is the nerve supply is given to the eyeball so when ciliary ganglion is destroyed uh, the nerve supply or the sensation decreases and then comes uh, destruction of the ciliary epithelium by cyclodiathermy or uh, cyclophotocoagulation so aqueous is uh, produced from the ciliary epithelium so when we destroy the aqueous uh, secreted by the ciliary epithelium it leads to decrease of the intraocular pressure so this can be done with the help of cyclodiathermy or cyclophotocoagulation and uh, finally when uh, nothing can be done and the patient is still having severe um, problem and uh, pain uh, so pain is not at all relieved by the conservative methods then only we can go for enucleation of the eyeball enucleation is uh, totally taking out the eyeball and uh, when it is totally taken it uh, leads to empty socket empty socket and uh, this thing is there it is not relieved by uh, conservative methods we go to enucleation of the eyeball 2 minutes 2 minutes minutes coming to complications of uh, 
absolute glaucoma complications is uh, when the patient is left as such and the patient is not treated uh, it leads to complications so what are all the complications due to high iop uh, corneal ulceration can be there so patient can have severe corneal ulceration Uh, and um, it can get infected and uh, that will also lead to pain and everything and uh, due to high intraocular pressure uh, all the structures are thinned out so when it is thinned out and sclera is also thinned out uh, it will lead, it can lead to uh, staphyloma formation uh, so according to the staphyloma we have a site where it is formed we have anterior staphyloma ciliary equatorial staphyloma posterior staphyloma and everything so here the staphyloma is due to thinned out sclera and increased intraocular uh, pressure so this is also one of the main complication so once it goes for staphyloma uh, there are high chances of um, perforation so after some time what happens uh, everything shrinks starts uh, shrinking like a uh, ciliary body iop everything when ciliary body so ciliary body is the source of formation of aqueous so when ciliary body degenerates the uh, aqueous outflow is also reduced thereby it leads to uh, decrease in the iop and finally when the iop is decreased or something uh, what will happen the iop is not there the eyeball will collapse and it will shrink so finally it will lead to atrophic bulbi atrophic bulbi is uh, uh, the eyeball uh, everything structures everything is lost and uh, it shrinks like a collapsed balloon or something like that and it decreases in size and everything thereby it leads to atrophic bulbi so these are the complications of absolute glaucoma which happens uh, when uh, the glaucoma is not at all treated and it is left as such so with this we finish the glaucoma so it is a uh, uh, we have treat uh, we have dealt about uh, primary uh, open angle angle closure and uh, absolute glaucoma uh, congenital glaucoma is an entirely different um, picture so that will be dealt in the next class Uh, and uh, congenital glaucoma is the glaucoma which is present uh, since birth and uh, usually it uh, mainly increases the size of the eyeball which is called as uh, bophthalmus or oxi with the blue sclera and uh, everything or the same investigations that is intraocular pressure disc changes has to be seen but since it is a child we give see everything under general examination that is the main difference so congenital glaucoma or bophthalmus is also a separate entity thank you